Welcome. I'm Meredith. This is the Oasis Spiritual Empowerment Tarot. All about tarot, oracle, and empowering you. And we have another unboxing. This is the Star Codes Astro Oracle. Um, and this is again, um, if you saw my last video, assuming I post these in order, because I'm recording a whole bunch right uh, one after another, basically. Um, but this is the second deck that um, I bought basically thanks to Miriam of Miriam Starchild. Um, and I will link her video in the description. She has so a bunch of great decks um, that she unboxes in that video. And there are actually a couple more that I think I may have to pick up at some point. But, um, yeah, let's, let's go right in. So this is a 56 card deck. And it's by Heather Rowan Robbins. And the artwork is by Lucas Lua de Souza. It's a tight, it's a tight box. It'll loosen up, um, you know, as I use it. So we have a good size guidebook. Um, and this is a deck that, it was actually on my list for a while, um, but I wasn't really sure I would use it. And, um... But then when I was watching Miriam, I was actually um, just kind of shuffling the Divine Muse Oracle and uh, playing with it a little bit. And I pulled the uh, Muse of Astrology. And so I picked up this deck as well as the Herbal Astrology. I felt like it was a sign. And they're really pretty decks. So. Um, let's take a quick look at the guidebook. So, um, we have an introduction, how to use it, orientation to astrology. Um, and we do have, we have about 10 pages, um, of how to use this oracle and about seven pages for astrology. So that's pretty good, you know, for a book like this. So then we have... Um, lenses and so within lenses we have signs, qualities, solar activity then we have celestial characters and under that we have luminaries, planets, asteroids lunar nodes then we have locations so we have cardinal points, houses then we have patterns supportive aspects, challenging aspects changing states and then we have acknowledgments about the author, about the artist. So, um, okay, so basically lenses include the signs, qualities, energetic level through which you see the world. Your lens card can expand the aperture through which you view a problem or situation and can help you try on a different perspective. Celestial characters are the personalities or archetypes that express themselves in your charts. These cards can describe which archetype is activated by your question and what strengths you can call upon to take action on the guidance you receive. Locations include the points in your astrological chart like ascendant, descendant, chart houses, all of which refer to the locations or compartments in your life that are activated in the present moment and in need of attention. Patterns describe the relationships between the archetypes and investigate whether your situation is a passing event instigated from, an out, from the outside or part of the progression of your soul's growth. Very nice. Um, talks about how to um, 
you know, how to read with it, different spreads you could do. It's a nice little kind of introduction to astrology. Um, all right, so then when it gets to the cards, looks like we have, you know, roughly two pages, a little less um, for each one. So let's look at the cards. So these are the backs, which are super beautiful. Um, and give you an idea on size. It's a little taller, a good bit wider. I mean, pretty standard tarot size. You know what? Because they are a little bit bigger, I feel like I should play out just a little bit. So I'm not cutting off the, the cards. Okay. So, um, we have a number, which Oh, <laughs> so, all right. We have a number. We have um, basically the title of, of what the card is and then a keyword, it looks like. So we have Aries Act, Taurus Cultivate. And I like that. So we have a lot of. of um, symbols in here. So we have the element, we have the astrological sign, planet, Gemini, we have cross-pollinate, Cancer, we have immerse, Leo, we have Shine. Yeah, this is my least favorite drawing, though, so far. <laughs> I'm a Leo. I'm really weird about Leo depictions. I don't know. But otherwise, I love the card. Like, what's that? I don't know, like that. Um, doesn't matter. Virgo Digest. That's interesting. Libra is balanced. That's beautiful. Scorpio, investigate. Sagittarius, expand. That's beautiful, too. See, it's always the Leos that are just not quite Capricorn. Well, that's my rising. That's beautiful. Achieve. Aquarius is collaborate. Pisces, sensitize. That's beautiful to say. It's only the Leo that I don't like. Oh well. That's my moon. Alright. And then we have dignified strength. Debilitated discomfort. Retrograde review. Solar calm clarify. That's beautiful. Solar flares activate. Sun, we have the source. Look how beautiful that is. Moon perception. Mercury, we have messages. That's gorgeous. You know what? Watch. Leo's the only one that I don't care for. I'll bet you. Venus, beloved. Yeah, I have like higher expectations for the Leo cards. I don't know. But it's like that with everything. Mars, we have motion. That's beautiful. Really interesting the way it was done. 
Jupiter Abundance. Saturn Structure. Uranus Change. Neptune Vision. Pluto Rebirth. Chiron Heal. Ceres Nurture. Pallas Athena Think. Juno Partnership. Vesta Hearth. That's beautiful. South Node Past. North Node Future. And I love how... That's lovely. Oh, these are... Are these all... Almost. Not quite. Ascendant. Entrance, Midheaven, Pinnacle, Descendant, Invitation, Imam Koli, Root, in the first house we have Arrival. And I mean, these are basically describing the houses too. So it's if if you don't know much about astrology, this could be a great deck because it's it's kind of telling you what they are, you know, what they represent. So second house resources. Third house communication. Fourth house, home. Fifth house, passion. Sixth house, sustainability. That's beautiful. Seventh house, relationship. Eighth house, mystery. Ninth house, exploration. Tenth house, authority. That's beautiful. Eleventh house, community. Twelfth house, introspection. And then we have conjunction, alliance. Trine or sextile, symbiosis. Opposition, confrontation, square, semi square, quincuns, tension, transits, we have climate, and then progressions, we have journey. Really nice. Yeah, the only one that I don't really care for is the Leo card. I think I have like a higher expectation for for it doesn't even matter it could be a painting it could be jewelry it just never is quite what I want it to be that's probably a Leo trait too honestly but there you have it so if I ever see anything that I don't know meets my expectation or desire for a Leo thing, I will get it. Whatever it is. It could be a, a painting. It could be, I don't know, a figurine. It doesn't matter. But it's gotta, it's gotta be quite right for me. I don't know. But, um, anyway. So yeah, they shuffle, they shuffle nicely. Move nicely. Let's pick one 
and take a look at the guidebook. So now we have progressions for the journey. The planets continuously move through time and space. When you are born, you imprint the patterns of that moment, which are described in your natal chart. But the planets keep moving, and you also imprint the patterns they make as they progress through those first few months. Those progressions sketch out the big sweeping journey of your life. You live that pattern out at roughly the rate of a year to a day for the rest of your life. Once you're born, you can't choose the cycles you live through, but you can always choose how you respond. So then we have an action. And I think, yeah, so for, for all of these cards, after that little paragraph, it gives you an action and then a challenge. So for this, the action Progressions do not speak of a passing thing, but to the big sweeping arcs of karmic fate to your soul's journey. Your present situation may not make sense in the short term because it has more to do with big karmic patterns and how those intersect with the karmic patterns of the world's progress, and less to do with your daily existence. Stand back and look at your life's journey. Think of the years you engaged with the world and the years you needed time for more personal work. Consider making a timeline or painting this landscape to see where you are in those big sweeping patterns. This situation may feel faded, but the outcome is not predestined. Though you may feel uncomfortable, you always have a choice about how you respond and where you go. To help guide you in the moment, consider where you would like to be at the end of your life, a far distant point, and look back. Let this future become your lighthouse to guide you. Actually, that's a technique that um, I use as a, as a hypnotist for, for people sometimes. It's, it's really powerful. Um, you know, if you're having trouble figuring out a solution to someone, take you to a time when when you've already done it and then you can look back and see what you did it's pretty cool um, uh, even though you may have to go around the rocks and work with the tides let your lighthouse guide you now the challenge this is not a small obstacle or opportunity this is part of a complex pattern Every choice you make changes how it unfolds. Oh, and there's a gift, too. Is that with every... Oh, that is with every card, too. So we have action, challenge, gift. So for this card, the gift, trust the tides and set your own sails. I don't know if that's really a gift. That's just telling you what to do, but we'll go with it. Um... These are really lovely. So I really like, um, I like the book. I will definitely use the book, at, you know, at, <laughs> at least from time to time. Certainly to start with. Um... And it could be interesting to use this deck to kind of, um, like almost plot out a chart and then do a tarot spread on top of that. Um, I don't know. I would have to kind of do it and see, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. It could be really interesting and you could do... You can do it for yourself, you can do it for others. It's just that, mm. <laughs> The 
It's so stupid. I know, it doesn't even matter, but I just don't care for that line. But it's a beautiful deck. I really, really like the deck. And I am looking forward to using it. Yeah, I'm going to play with this a lot. I think there are a lot of different ways that you could use this. So... Yeah, I'm going to have to play with it and kind of digest, but I'm thinking that I, you could certainly use this. I think you could absolutely use this as, like, just a standard oracle, but I think it might be better, at least for me, um, to maybe use in a different way. So I will say, but I really like it. I'm looking forward to using it. And um, yeah, I, I think it's lovely. So thank you again to Miriam for showing this deck and um, enticing me. So again, this is the Star Codes Astro Oracle by Heather Rowan Robbins, artwork by Lucas Lua de Souza, Souza. And uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe and hit the bell so you get alerted when I post new videos. And until next time, just be wonderful to yourself. Be really, really wonderful because you deserve the best. And it's time you believe it. Time you acted like it treated yourself like that.